Good morning, students. Myself, I am Dr. Srinivas from Silver Jubilee Government College, Karnur. Today, I would like to explain about uh, the RDNA technology, which is very important for the students of biology, and where there are subtopics called as adapters and linkers, gene transfer methods, and PCR. So, coming to the aspect of uh, uh, biotechnology, it's a key subject where all the research is going on. And this is a science where we will use the living organisms to produce the valuable products of which are useful for the human welfare. So, using the technology and the knowledge of cells to modify their activities in order to make living organisms more effective for serving the people, that is the main theme of the biotechnology. We know that there is a technology driven era is going on where the technology is applied in the field of biotechnology in the form of a biology I can say. So, why we are using the technology in the biology, why we need this as if the population is growing on, there is a high increasing in the population over the period of uh, 30 to 40 years and new issues are coming on and there is a scarcity in the food, scarcity in the living environment and there is a high requirements. So, in order to reach these requirements, we need to have to develop some new technological processes I can say by using the living organisms. So, if you can go back the old process so called as the telegraph, later on it was converted or it was evolved to a phone, land phones, then to mobile, then to pager, now the smartphones and future will be the virtual. So, look at the change or transformation is going on in the technology in all the fields. Obviously, in biology also the technology is growing rapidly and that technology should be useful for the humankind and for the human welfare. So, look at this uh, funny picture, this was depicted by uh, some of the animator where he jointed a scorpion with a snake and a, uh, a shark fish with a cat looking to be funny, but it has a lot of meaning. He had an idea that there might be a chance in future that the snake may be combined or snake may be cloned with a scorpion that might be termed as a hybrid and cat may have a big teeth which are very very aggressive teeth I can say uh, which can be combined with a shark. So, this thought of animals can be termed as a hybrids and the usage of technology is called as a cloning and the inherent or inert or internal technology which leads to RDNA technology. So, what it means by a gene? We all know that a gene is a segment of a DNA which codes for an RNA or a polypeptide. So, a clone is a group of organisms or cells or molecules arising from a single individual. So, we are going to uh, have a target DNA, a specified DNA which you require, which we require and you are going to clone it into number of uh, species or number of uh, I can say copies. So, that is called as a gene cloning. So, gene cloning is a wider spectrum in the present biotechnology where it has different steps. I can say it is the, the, the usage of gene technology or gene cloning, it, it varies from species to species, but the gene cloning has a specific process which involves an RDNA technology where you have to follow the following steps which are shown as you need to select the DNA, you need to join the DNA with the vector, you need to introduce the vector into a specific host, then you need to amplify the host or the bacteria and you need to select the transformants which you require. They are the basic steps of RDNA technology which is a part of gene cloning. So, coming to the part of cloning, it is a process of producing multiple copies of a similar type. You might have seen the, a, a, a recent movie called as a robo where you will find a similar sort of robots with no difference. So, clone is derived from a word called as a twig and in molecular biology we are using this cloning in different fields. The one is called molecular cloning or molecule cloning where you will extract the monoclonal antibodies and the multiplication of DNA. In cell cloning, you will culture the bacterium and culture of animal cells where you will find in 
stem cells which is a booming field and organism cloning where you will uh, find in animal cloning as well as in the micro propagation. So, this cloning is a technique which is widely used in animals as well as the plants, in prokaryotes as well as in the eukaryotes. In the plants by the cloning recently it was a big I can say drift that we have uh, produced a Bt cotton which is a high resistant cotton and that cotton has a, a as a transgenic I can say it is a transgenic plant and it had a resistant power over the many uh, what I can say the insects. So, the second thing uh, many pictures have uh, shown the second slide second uh, picture so called as a golden rice. So, comparative uh, comparing with the normal rice the golden rice has a special characters that it has a beta carotene and it has a high uh, I can say uh, vitamin A. So, that sort of rice being produced by the gene cloning technique and this is one of the technology which will be used in plants. So, recently the gene to cloning technology is widely used in the plants. So, coming to the animals. So, in animals a wide range of cloning is going on and I have given a three important aspects of cloning in animals. One is the reproductive cloning, second one is the gene cloning, third one is the therapeutic cloning. So, you have you are all you are all aware that recently we are having a problem with the recent couples where there is a lack of child because of some sort of problems. So, that can be cured or that can be managed with the reproductive cloning. In reproductive cloning there are two basic categories called as a embryo splitting and nuclear transfer. And the coming to the other one that is called as a gene cloning the production of multiple copies where we already read in the pre previous slides and it is very useful in genetic engineering. And the third most important aspect of the cloning is called therapeutic cloning which is widely used in all the research uh, institutes where the major as uh, the major aspect in the therapeutic cloning is the, uh, one of the example is the cancer. The cure of cancer or the minimization of the cancer cells can be happened through this therapeutic cloning. So, creation of new tissues and organs from single cells this does not create any genetically identical individuals, but helpful in the humankind for curing the diseases. So, the methodology which involves in the reproductive cloning is one the enucleation of egg you are all aware that we need to uh, we need to take out the nucleus from the egg then there is an introduction or induction of the uh, particular cells then nuclear transfer activation of egg then embryo transfer to the mother and pregnancy confirmation and checking for genetic identity. This is a general process I can say which will be seen in the reproductive cloning. So, as you have seen this picture this is the first cloned frog being developed by Briggs and King and this is one of the drift I can say in the, te in the biotechnology when it comes to the cloning. So, this cloned aspect was clearly given by this uh, two eminent scientists and this has proved that as cloning can be happened in eukaryotes because so far in night from the 1970s the cloning was seen only in the prokaryotes especially in the equally bacteria and there is a transformation that the cloning can happen in the eukaryotes and the example you will see in the screen that there is a northern leopard frog. And uh, most of the students are aware of this beautiful topic called as dolly. Dolly is one, one other uh, one of the topic in cloning where we will study this dolly since the previous classes like in from the from the from our childhood. So, this was a story which links to animal biotechnology. So, the dolly was originated in July 5th and it died on February 14, 2003 and at an age of 7 years. So, dolly had proved that as cloning can happen in the animals and through the cloning we can generate a new sort of animals without any reproduction. And it has raised a number of important issues that some problems which are seen in the cloning can be can be I can say they can be modified in future. So, this is a process that created in the uh, in the uh, creation of dolly 
that the enucleated uh, uh, cell and fusion of that particular nucleus with an egg and culturing and putting into a uterus or uh, womb of a female for developing a lamp. So, this slide uh, depicts a total uh, strategy or uh, the total uh, mammalian cloning that was happened so far wherein from 1984 to so 2002 or 2003 three, lot of aspects has been come like the, the, the production of lambs, production of calves and production of uh, new type of uh, uh, sheep and transgenic sheep and the production of mice, rat as well as the, the, the small middle picture which is called as a tetra. This is a female rhesus monkey named as a tetra was cloned by splitting early embryos which was developed in 1999 and in 2000 through the cloning the pigs were developed or pigs was cloned I can say and the cloning also helped in the development of rabbits in 2002 and uh, these are the some of the examples in the cloning that the, uh, the production of or the uh, new baby so from the test tube baby. And there are certain examples which come uh, which come along the way of uh, mammalian cloning. And this is one of the finest example after the dolly that is called as a poly and this was developed by Wilmot and, and this is a basic uh, example where the human gene was inserted into the uh, sheep that is the finest uh, example you will see after the dolly. And this particular picture shows the cloning process in the different animals the production of uh, the first cloned rat called as a Ralph and production of CC cats it is called as a copy cat we generally used in the the word will be used uh, the word generally used in uh, cartoons copy cats and uh, these pet animals are also being developed through the process of cloning. So, this is an another aspect of the cloning where the cloning helps in therapeutic uh, way I can say. In therapeutic way the diseased human being taken and the important cells that are not infected will be taken out and they will be cultured and they will be transformed again to that human for uh, curing the diseases. Through, the, through this therapeutic cloning we will yield many type of cells which can be useful in, in this process of uh, curing the diseases and this is one of the example that has been given as a first clinical trial on basis of the therapeutic uh, usage I can say. So, hope this uh, slide is not clear to you, but this slide has an importance that through this cloning or through this uh, DNA technology recombinant DNA technology which has been used in the cloning, there are might more examples that have been evolved like the production of anticoagulants, production of blood factors colony stimulating factors erythropoietin which is a main uh, uh, substance in the RBC and the growth factors the human insulin generally we use this example in the RDNA technology often and interferons and interleukins and monoclonal antibodies and superoctase dismutase which is very essential for this antioxidant and the vaccines different kinds of vaccines been developed through this RDNA technology. And what are the potentials of the cloning and what are the problems? So, this slide will depict a, a, a small example like we can we can develop new organs or organisms and we can replace a lost cell by produ producing in the in the, in the in the mother's womb and gene therapy is one of the one of the best way for the cloning and we can uh, reverse the aging this this research is going on, but there are some problems that the overgrowth syndrome can, can be uh, a one of the problem and genetic defects is also one of the problem in the cloning and there might be a premature aging which you have already seen in an example called as a dolly and the insertion of genes can be can be controlled or cannot be controlled in the cloning process. So, this is a major aspect of the cloning where you will find um, the technology. So, this is called as a RDNA technology this RDNA technology basically a technology where you will find or you will take a, a DNA which you require take an example of an insulin or growth hormone or the hormone or the any product gene that you require as a final product. So, take the foreign uh, the foreign DNA and insert that foreign DNA into a vector the vectors may be of many kinds 
and produce a new D DNA called as a recombinant DNA and that will be inserted into a host cell, generally the host cells are the bacteria because they can be cultured in no time and this bacteria will develop into a, a mass of culture and from that uh, culture or from that bacteria you will take the desired products it may be of chemicals or hormones or enzymes or antibiotics or uh, blood factors whatever may be. So, there are two types of vectors in general you will find or two types of vectors which will be seen in the biotechnology one is called as a cloning vectors which are useful for the cloning process and the other one is called the expression ve vectors which will be useful for the final production of some product it might be a protein or an enzyme. So, the foreign DNA may be a genomic genome DNA, foreign DNA may be a cDNA or amplified DNA or synthetic DNA which will be used in the process of the rDNA. So, hope this picture is not clear to you, but this picture will show that this is a bacteria where it does not have the foreign DNA or the insert the required DNA that you are going to culture and you are taking a, a eukaryotic gene here and you are inserting into a plasmid and transforming into a bacteria this is called as a transformation and after the transformation you will culture this bacteria in a medium it might be agar or agar agar or whatever may be the medium. Then the cultured bacteria may be taken off because you need to select that your DNA presence is important you need to separate the bacteria that contains your recombinant DNA from the non recombinant DNA they are called as a transformants. So, after separating you can separate your desired DNA or the, uh, the required DNA or you can find the product. So, this will come under the pro process of expression vectors. So, here if you can uh, use this slide. So, these are the recombinant DNAs might be useful for the pest resistant gene which will be inserted in future in the plants or the genes which will be used as a bacteria cleaning the toxic waste which will be oil spills which will be generally seen in the oceans. And some products may be seen or they will be extracted from the bacteria which might be useful for dissolving the blood clots which is a common problem in new generations and the growth hormone which is a uh, which is a lagging in some humans and it can be treated by extracting from the bacteria. So, before going to the RDNA technology every student should uh, will buy I can say it is a by heart this enzymes because it, they play a vital role. The major enzymes are the alkaline phosphate because it removes the phosphate group from the 5 prime end. You all are aware that there are two ends one is called the 5 prime and other one is called the 3 prime. Generally the 3 prime end will have the free hydroxyl group and the 5 prime end will have the phosphate group. The phosphodiester bond will be formed between these two ends that is from the 3 prime to 5 prime. So, if you if you if you would like to uh, eradicate the self annealing of uh, a DNA or primer whatever it may be we need to remove the phosphate and convert into OH. So, that can be done through a, uh, the, an enzyme called as alkaline phosphate and most of the students know that the most important enzyme in the recombinant DNA technology is the ligase which joins the two nucleotides by establishing the phosphodiester bond and nucleases. Nucleases you are aware that this particular enzyme is useful for removing the DNA or the cuts the DNA or shortening of DNA. And if, when, while you study the, pro, the, the topic of replication you heard about the polymerases DNA polymerase 1, 2 and 3. So, polymerases are the main enzymes in the molecular biology and these enzymes will be useful for synthesis of new, new DNA fragment from a template or from a parent. And DNA is an enzyme, DNA ACE is an enzyme that will be useful for production of single stranded NICs in the DNA. And you all are aware that exonuclease is an enzyme which will remove the nucleotides from the 3 prime end or from the 5 prime end. So, the another important enzyme is called as polynucleotide kinase. These two, uh, these two enzymes are uh, specific because the alkaline phosphate will remove the phosphate and the polynucleotide kinase will add the phosphate and the second row of enzymes which will play a vital role is called as restriction enzymes because they cleave the uh, DNA at a specific site. And the reverse transcript is an enzyme that will create or synthesize a new DNA from an RNA and the last but not least there is an enzyme called as a tag polymerase which will be used rapidly or widely in the process of PCR. So, this is a general picture 
where you are taking a vector called as a plasmid and cleaving that vector with a specific restriction enzyme and cleaving your desired DNA with the same enzyme because the cleavage will be of a same pattern. Hence, you can add your insert into your plasmid at a specific site as a specific point. This is called as a restriction enzyme uh, working out I can say and this will create a, a production of a new DNA by using an enzyme called as a ligase. Ligase is nothing but an addition. So, if you can see this uh, uh, particular picture, the restriction enzyme will, so if you, if you add a restriction enzyme to a target or a plasmid, it will search for its site and if it is a long, 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 long way, it has to, it will jump or slide and reach the particular point. And there is a reaction called as a coupling and it denatures the hydrogen bonds and there is a cleavage. The cleavage of restriction enzymes depends on one type to other type because some restriction enzymes will cleave in a pattern called the sticky ends or cohesive ends. They, they, they can attach easily and the other one is called as a blunt ends. Please remember my dear students, the blunt ends are the ends where there is a there is a minimal chance that there is a, there will be fusion of these two blunt ends rather than the sticky ends. So, the blunt ends can be they can be ligated with a special mechanism or special I can say uh, DNA fragments called as a linkers or adapters which we will read in the next few slides. So, every restriction enzyme has a specific uh, sequence to cut and if you see this particular picture. So, this is a nucleotide, this is a structure of nucleotide and this is a sequence of nucleotides and this is a picture where these two nucleotides will be combined with a phosphodiester bond and this can be happens through only ligase enzyme. And the cleavage will be happens or cleavage can happen through a restriction enzyme, it might be hydrogen bonds or it might be a phosphodiester bond. So, once the cleavage is happened, they both can be ligated new and the plasmid can be ligated by the ligase and the reaction can be pe performed by different set of enzymes. And these are the different vectors which will participate in the process of uh, uh, RDNA technology. The smallest parts, uh, the most widely used is called as a plasmids, but a vector should have an origin of replication ORI site, which it starts the replication and selectable marker where you can identify your recombinant DNA in a group of uh, uh, culture that has been cultured in the uh, uh, cultured after the cloning. So, you, the identification of a gene can be happens through the antibiotic resistant gene or through the production of an enzyme producing gene, it may be a lag Z. So, plasmids are the short vectors or a short uh, a small vectors which will carry a small DNA and the second group of vectors are called to be the cosmids which are uh, somewhat bigger than the plasmids and these two are artificially made. And the third group of vectors are called to be the phase vectors, which you are all aware that the plasmids or the vectors, the phases, uh, the, the phase bacteria, phase virus will attack the bacteria. And uh, you will, you already read in the topic of transduction. And the fourth and fifth important things are called as a back and ACK or bacterial artificial chromosome and yeast artificial chromosome. The bacterial artificial chromosome and yeast artificial chromosomes are the two big, uh, two uh, um, vectors which has a sequence of uh, uh, a large sequence and which can be useful for incorporating the big sequence of DNA. So, if you take an insulin gene, it is a small gene. If you would like to insert a big gene which contains more than uh, 2000 or 3000 nucleotides or the base pairs, that can happen through the big uh, uh, vector so called as a back or generally used as called as a ACK. So, here if you, if you see this particular uh, picture, this is a vector where you will insert your uh, uh, required DNA. So, I already told you that inserting your DNA required or uh, DNA which you require or desired or insert into a, into a plasmid or a vector can happen through ligating the linkers and adapters. So, adapters will be will play a vital role in addition of these two particular blunt ends. And the vectors which have been combined with your with a recomb with a DNA which you require, they are called as RDNAs. These RDNAs should be incorporated or transformed into the bacteria for the culture to get your product. So that can be termed as a gene transfer, which we will discuss in the next topics. So this is a, com a, a common uh, slide where uh, total aspect of uh, DNA was given. 
and this is the final cloning that you are cultured after the recombinant DNA you have cultured your recombinant DNA in a in a in a through the bacteria and it can be screened by the antibiotic resistance or blue white screening which will be useful for identifying the lang z gene or enzyme producing gene so this is about uh, uh, the rdna technology and uh, in this rdna technology the aspects that will be used are called as uh, adapters and linkers so adapters So, what are mean by adapters and linkers? These are called as a coupling tools. So, I already told you that there are sticky ends and blunt ends. So, both has to be ligated to the plasmid. Some restriction enzymes will cut in a blunt, blunt way and some restriction en enzymes will cut in a sticky way. So, they can be ligated by using the linkers and adapters and other type is called as a homopolymeric tail which has a sequence of long tail of A and T or G and C. So, linkers are double stranded DNA which are self complementary oligo oligomers and they have a specific restriction site. That means, if you add a linker to a plasmid or if you add a linker with a desired DNA or a insert, they cleave with the same pattern because it has to be added to the plasmid or to a vector. And after addition, these linkers can be ligated by using a D4 DNA ligase which is very effective ligase. And if you can see this particular uh, aspect, maybe it, it is not clear to you, but I will I'll, I'll show you the next by a picture. So, this is a target DNA or the insert which you are going to add, which has a blunt end. So, you are adding two different linkers here and you are using a restriction enzyme and this restriction enzyme, uh, uh, a restriction enzyme is, is cleaving that linker in such a pattern that it is getting a cohesive end. Look at this and it can be added easily to the plasmid. If you can look at the second picture, look at these, uh, uh, pl this is a plasmid where you have cleaved with the restriction enzyme and you are cleaved with the same using the restriction enzyme, you cleaved the DNA, desired DNA in the same pattern, but it is having a blunt end. This blunt end has to be added to this portion. So, how it will be added? It might be added or it might not. If it does not be, if it does not work out, you need to use a, a aspect called as adopters or the linkers. So, if you look at this particular picture, these are the blunt DNA uh, uh, fragment that you are taking and you are using a linker, it is a eco R1 linker which has a specific sequence and it has a restriction site. So, there will be formation of a phosphodiester bond between these two, you are adding these two and now you are cleaving with a restriction enzyme. So, that you got a cleaved ended a target DNA which can be easily inserted into the plasmid. So, this picture is, has clearly given the description, this is a short DNA, okay. this is a target DNA. Now, what you are doing here is, you are adding your linker with this DNA, now you are using a restriction enzyme that has been cleaved into a specific portion, now it can be ligated easily with the plasmid. That is the beauty of the linkers and that is the beauty of the technology. And these are the different uses that can be uh, used by the, for the, by the linkers. And uh, the most important thing is, it will be used in the diagnostic purpose and tagged with the fluorescence so that you can find out the, uh, the find, find out your requirement. And generally, it will be used in RT-PCR and also in the southern blattings. So there are a lot of limitations in the usage of linkers. We will discuss in in detail in next slides. So what are the adapters? So adapters and linkers are little different. I can say I kindly see this picture here. So, both are little, uh, there is a little variation. The linkers are blunt ended, but the adapters having the sticky end. So, if the if you see the linker, the linkers will be added to a foreign DNA, it looks like a blunt end like. 
and it will be cleaved by using the restriction enzyme and the same restriction enzyme will cleave this plasmid so that these two will become the complement but when coming when it comes to the adapter adapter will have a blunt end at one point and a cohesive end at the other point so that it can be added easily with the target dna and the same thing will be added to the plasmid which has a complementary to the vector it might be a plasmid or anything so these adapters are double stranded uh, oligonucleotides as if we know that and they have the protruding sequences which will be seen and which will be different from the linkers so so, this is a general picture which will which will totally depicts the uh, um, so structure of uh, these adapters. No, look at we are adding the adapter in this sense, but sometimes we need to uh, enhance the length of the DNA so that there's adapter the two adapters can be ligated like this. If you don't want to ligate these two adapters, what we need to do now? Imagine this is a three prime end and this is a five prime end. We need to remove the phosphate from this particular junction because it, it, sh it should not ligate then this can be performed with an enzyme called as alkaline phosphatase. If you want to ligate this what we need to do we need to use an enzyme called kinase. So, that is the difference between the alkaline phosphatase and PNK. So, the self ligation sometimes may be prevented and some self ligation sometimes it has to happen. So, these are two different types of uh, 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 varieties of adapters which will be seen and they have a sequence and they have a, a different uh, uh, varieties uh, basing on their nucleotides. And coming to the aspect of uh, adapters linkage, the DNA ligase cannot form phosphodiester bond between the 5 prime OH and 3 prime. I already told you that while you, while you delete or while you terminate the phosphate, it will become OH. So, this can prevent, this can prevent the formation of a phosphodiester bond and this can prevent the self ligation between the adapters. So, the third most important thing in the ligation is called as a homopolymeric tailing. So, this uh, technique uh, which uh, had a speciality that here you will use an enzyme called as a deoxynucleotidal transferase. The enzyme itself has a, a, a stuff I can say because it is transferring some deoxynucleotides which may be DATP, GTP whatever it may be the, the, the four nucleotides. So, the transfer of the nucleotides to the terminal part of uh, the DNA. So, the terminal part of DNA which has if you can look at this particular slide look at this is a target DNA. So, it has a blunt end you do not have the uh, elongation uh, elongated end. Now, you are using a enzyme called as a terminal transferase. So, what it will do it will simply add the nucleotides a common nucleotide. So, it is called homopolymers. So, nucleotide is a monomer adding different monomers become a polymer. So, it is adding a C's okay, cytosines at this place. At the same other end of the plasmid where it has to be ligated it is adding the G's. So, look at the beauty that the G can be can form a bonding with the C. Obviously, these two can be ligated in such a way that they will form a recombinant DNA. So, these, these type of uh, uh, ends are called as a homopolymeric tail endings and the enzyme is called as terminal transferase which has an importance and there are many factors called as a magnesium and cobalt, cobalt which enhance the reaction and this is one of uh, a special uh, linkers I can say linkers adapters and the homopolymeric tails are the add-ons which can add the blunt end sometimes with a plasmid or blunt ends with uh, the desired DNA with a vector. So, in the recombinant technology just recollect once that we have already uh, told you the process of rec uh, recombinant DNA technology. We have given a description of vectors. Now, we are talking about the insertion of vector with the plasmid by using this technology. So, there are multi more applications which are uh, connected to this topic and we will study in detail in the in the in the in the next slides. So, coming to the aspect of the so the applications of these linkers and adapters has a wider role that that will be used in different technologies. So, the double stranded or single stranded DNA will be labeled so that we can identify and they will be used in rapid amplification of CDNA ends 
and also used in in situ localization of apoptosis and this is this corresponds to a topic of linkers, adopters and homopolymeric tails. So, coming to the topic of the delivery of that particular vector into the host. So, So, what it meant by gene delivery? So, you have prepared a recombinant DNA and you have inserted that you required the DNA into a plasmid or a vector whatever may be the vector and you are going to deliver into a host. So, the delivery of your trans recombinant DNA into a host may varies from the cell to cell. In bacteria, you will use a word called as a transformation and it will be induced or it will, it will be enhanced by the calcium chloride and transduction and electroporation are the two processes and plant cells you will find the transfection and most commonly you will uh, used is called as agro infection and liposome fusion and particle bombardment. In animal cells or uh, the animal recombinant DNA can be transformed into or uh, uh, it can be incorporated into the host cell by the transformation, electroporation, micro injection, particle bombardment liposome mediated gene transfer and virus method which is one of the important methods while you compare with the other methods. Please remember dear students, the two aspects of this uh, gene transfer depends on only one uh, particular uh, schematic representation. One using the mechanical methods and other one by using the biological method. So, virus vector method will come under the category of a biological method and other mechanical methods like the electroporation, micro injection, particle bombardment, this will come under the mechanical uh, way of uh, um, inducing or a mechanical way of incorporating your DNA or the gene into your vector. So, I would like to explain these following uh, methods in detail. So, what it meant by electroporation? Name itself indicates that there is an apparatus called as an electroporator apparator where some polar molecules come uh, kindly see this uh, sentence introduction of polar molecules into the host cells by high voltage electric impulse you are giving an impulse. So, we are aware that the plasma membrane is a charged membrane. So, by giving this high a little electric impulse there will be a variation in the plasma membrane that can be termed as a creation of a porosity. So, that porosity or the formation of pores will be useful for the delivery of your desired DNA into the cell and that is why it is called as a electroporation. So, if you can look at the process, we are going to introduce the DNA molecules into the host cell where you are increasing your impulse or the electric impulse to 10,000 to 1 lakh uh, uh, volts or uh, micro volts. So, so this this will be this will be uh, from milliseconds to my mic microseconds to milliseconds. Then that disturbs the plasma membrane for the creation of a temporary aqueous pores. So this aqueous pores will be useful for the transportation of your desired DNA into the cell. So here, while you use this technique, especially in the plants, uh, you have to remove the pectin because that only inhibit this entry. So, the, if you remove the pectin, there will be easy or the increase of DNA operation into the cell. And in some plants, the tobacco mosaic virus used in tobacco pro protoplasm and it is one of the successful method for incorporation of the DNA into the uh, host cells. And the second most important is a micro injection, name itself indicates that there is a micro needle and you, you already taken a, a quantity of DNA or the recombinant DNA directly you are incorporating that DNA into the cell by keeping a holding play, a holding pipette. So, this is also one of the important methods generally used in the animals, especially called as a gene transfer or gene transfection in the mammalians or mammals. So, the holding pipette it sucks and holds the target cell and you are inserting your concern or the desired DNA into the cell and there is no requirement of any marker gene and there is no requirement of uh, any uh, what I can say uh, 
uh, specialized mechanisms and target gene can directly uh, enters into the host cell and you need to use a little dye for uh, knowing the DNA or for marking the DNA whether it is there or not and it will be useful for creating the transgenic mammals. And, and the third important method is called as a gene gun method. It is also called as a biological ballistics. The name itself indicates the ballistics are nothing but the weapons which has uh, the ballistics or are, are, are the biggest weapons which will be used in the military where it has a highly projectiles. They, are, they, they will be projected from land to air. So, they will create lot of energy and uh, they will they will move from one place to other place with the, by, by, by producing lot of energy. So, the process also uh, similar to that uh, that particular uh, word so that it is given as a biological ballistics. So, high velocity micro projectiles will be delivered from the uh, machine and that micro projectiles are the micro particles which contains your desired DNA. So, along with the micro projectiles, look at that uh, micro projectile mediated transformation. So, this will be this will be useful for the transformation of your DNA from uh, from the part to the particular host cell. So, with a high acceleration, your particles are moving. So, the basic equipment uh, to generate the acceleration, it is a, it's a stable process and it will be uh, coated with a two materials called as a gold or tungsten. So, it is a little costly affair, but it is a non-toxic and it is a micro size and high density with a rapid penetration. So, look at this apparatus, you are using a helium gas and pressurizing or accelerating, hence your particles will move by chasing or a special screen called as stopping screen. But the stopping screen will stop the macromolecules of the particles and allow the micro particles which enters into your uh, host cells. So, that is a that is a uh, beauty of the gene gun method and this is an apparatus structure which generally uh, available in the market. And there are certain disadvantages, what are the disadvantages? It is a costly consumables and there will be erratic uh, random integration and associated cells may be degraded or damaged by this gene gun method. And there might be chance of multiple copy entry which will be seen through this gene gun method. And coming to the liposomal gene delivery, the liposomal gene delivery is a method, a sweet method I can say, because we all know that the plants or animals or the cell wall is made up of lipo, uh, lipids or proteins and lipids. So, you are inserting your desired DNA into a liposomal vesicle and that liposomal vesicle will be added to the host cell, obviously these lipids will combine or the entry will be enhanced by adding a substance called as a polyethylene glycol. So, this is called as a liposomal gene delivery. So, what are the advantages and disadvantages? There are a lot of advantages because it does not require, it is not a toxic and we there is a there is a uh, less chance that we does not coat with any gold or any material and um, it eliminates uh, uh, uses of potential virus or toxic substances. The disadvantage is there might be chance that target tissue should have the regeneration capacity, this is the most important thing and random integration may happen and associated cells may have a, a problem of uh, 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 I can say there is a demarcation. So, the basic advantage of liposomal transformation is that it, it is not a toxic and they can protect directly uh, from the nucleases which are present at the nucleus and RDNA can be stored in the liposome for a long time, this is the most important thing in the liposomal transformation or liposomal fusion and the risk of potential is very low. So, last uh, met, uh, method is the polyethylene glycol mediated transformation where the naked DNA can be transformed into the cells by utilizing PEG with the presence of a uh, divalent cations. So, there are little disadvantages in this technique and uh, uh, there always there is a advantage and disadvantage in uses of any technique. So, the second most important thing is uses of the virus and these viruses are you know that they are very dangerous, they have the tropism, they have the viral genes, they have the pathogenicity, they have the immunogenicity and pesticides. So, every student have a feel that if you use the virus what will happen to your cells. Remember my dear students that we have to identify the viral genome and shut off some of the genes which will cause a damage to your cell and that those viruses are called because a replicon or replication incompetent viral vector for in vivo gene transfer. 
So, this uh, these are categorized in many ways. I will give you a few examples. The one is called as a retrovirus. This has two specialities. One being derived from it is called as a molinomurin leukemia virus and the beauty of this virus is this will contain an enzyme called as a reverse transcriptase. You all know that the reverse transcriptase is an enzyme which will convert the mRNA to or preparation of an a DNA from an mRNA. So, if you insert this particular virus or uh, the, if you use this virus, the mRNA can be transformed into DNA and that DNA will be useful for the other processes especially for the cancer. So, virus generally used in two ways, one is a short term and the other one is a long term. So, some viruses are used for long term expression therapeutic uh, transgenes I can say. So, this long term expression can happen through some viruses, it all depends on the capacity of the virus. So, the, the, the main limitation to this virus is it cannot act on the non dividing cells. So, the dividing cells only can be in the dividing cells only this virus can activate or this will incorporate its genome and this will happen and non dividing cells it does not work out. And look at the uh, procedure you have inserting a, a healthy gene into the viral genome, then this viral genome through the virus it is affecting or it is attacking the unhealthy cells and this may be converted into normal cell or production of a normal cell in, in a rapid number which will be useful for the patient recovery. The second one is called as a adenovirus. This is a specialized virus which has a capacity of 36. The retrovirus is having a capacity of 8 font KB that is carrying capacity of a DNA. So, it can carry more DNA, but the thing here is it will show the effect both on the dividing and non dividing cells, but it cannot insert uh, its genome into the chrom host chromosome that is only the defect of this particular virus, but expression will happen and initially it, it, it stays in the host cell for few months. So, expression time is important. So, the limitation is it shows the high immune response if a virus is uh, enter into a human cell obviously the immune reaction will happen. So, that immune reaction should be minimized, immunosuppressors will be used. Hence, the adenovirus will cause a high immune response and that is the one of the limitation to this virus. And the third important virus is a lentivirus, you all know that HIV virus one type of virus and there is a lot of ethical issues are going on on this virus. This also contains reverse transcriptase and it, it, it integrate a, a capacity of 9 KB and it has a characters of retro and adenovirus that is a, that is a beauty of this particular lentivirus. And uh, the important aspects of this virus is it has a prolonged transgenic expression look at it has a prolonged trans it can it can express its activity up to one year that means, in the therapeutic use if you are if you are using this particular virus the patient may be survived because of this particular uh, healthy genome that has been incorporated into the virus to the particular patient and it can be expressed till one year that is a that is a uh, uh, positive of this particular lentivirus. And uh, the second one and the fourth most important is called adeno associated virus and hence this is the smallest virus and it is a it is a no, it is not it is not a uh, dangerous virus I can say and uh, the only negative or uh, only uh, limitation to this virus is it has a small genome it cannot carry a long bit of genome. And the second most important thing is it will replicate with the help of other virus that is only the defect of this particular virus. And it affects only on one particular chromosome that is called the 19th chromosome. So, it is also widely used in the, uh, uh, in the, in the gene technology and other virus is vaccinia. This is the largest double stranded DNA with a 200 uh, KB capacity that it can carry more amount of DNA and it can infect any type of mammalians especially the neural cells or the neuron cells and it is a non integrating and short term expression it cannot express for more than years and the potential therapeutic treatment of solid tumor, tumors are nothing but one sort of a cancerous uh, habitation seen a uh, cancer habit seen in the humans and vaccine is widely used in this process and the limitations are it, it produces a cytotoxic uh, T cell response which is an immunal reaction and uh, they are not used in treating the chronic disease because of the cytotoxic effect. And last one is called the herpes sim, uh, simplex virus. This is also a specialized virus which has a capacity of 150 KB. It can carry the capacity of 30 KB and it can infect both the dividing and non dividing cells. Imagine if, if a virus is infecting a 
n number of cells that means uh, any type of cells there at they can attack the neural cells because any damage if it happens to neural cells it has to be it is not curable it can be cured by using the uh, genome uh, gene therapy and by a technology through the virus and it has a non integrating unit and persists in the cytoplasm for the years look at this the persistent in cytoplasm for years has a latent episomal state so we can use this virus for longer time and high cytotoxicity is one of the one of uh, the limitation for this virus and this is at overall differences between different viruses uh, that will be used in this uh, uh, transfer of recombinant dna into the host right so coming to the aspect of last aspect that is called as a polymer chain reaction most of the students are aware of this topic so this is a mechanical process or mechanized process for the production or amplification of dna remember my dear students you need to study this topic in a systematic way the first topic is about the cloning and the second topic is about the recombinant dna technology the third topic is the biological vectors and the fourth one is mechanical transfer of the gene transfer to a concerned host so the process is very clear that we are using biological uh, organisms for the transfer of your gene into a host that's that's what we discussed so far but if you see this topic this is linked to a topic called as a replication we are studying this replication since intermediate so replication is a process of production of dna from the parent dna you need to replicate or as the cell if the dividing cell is dividing in a rapid way the dna percent percentage may decrease so the replication process almost implies to the polymer chain reaction so you are amplifying your desired gene in a machine called as a thermocycler the the beauty of this particular polymer chain reaction is a polymerase you are using an enzyme called as a polymerase which has been derived from a specialized bacteria called as a thermophilus aquaticus which is an archaebacteria which lives in a in a, a spring uh, i can say um, hot waters or spring uh, spring waters and that bacteria can sustain uh, in a uh, temperature of 80 to 100 degrees that's the that's the reason they use this bacteria and use that particular enzyme called as tac polymerase and uh, after the uh, discovery of the pcr the, the biotechnology has a tremendous uh, uh, drift has been taken because uh, different types of pcrs are there and different type of amplifications are going on and uh, the pcr inventor so called as carry mullis has been awarded nobel prize in 1993 so look at if you got a sample uh, the sample may contain a dna you you don't have a, 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 a large portion of dna so if you lost this dna you cannot identify what it is then you can take the dna and amplify the dna into multi number of copies and you can identify or characterize a particular specimen or whatever it may be so generally the pcr is in uh, if you if you remember the forensic uh, uh, forensic cases a little drop of uh, blood or little drop of semen or whatever may be the component that have been available for the uh, for the cops they will take and they will use this pcr technique for identification of uh, um, uh, the the damages i can say so there are a lot of contents in the pcr and we will go uh, ahead as the time is very short so the main processes are the initialization denaturation annealing and elongation what you are doing to what you are doing now you are taking a dna fragment and it is you are amplifying into number of copies so what you need to add is important one the amplifying units are called as a dntps two the addition can be occurred by the polymerase three it has to occur in a sequential way be in a machine called as a thermocycler so at about the principle you all know that so a cycle is nothing but it consists of three fragments one denaturation of double stranded dna what you are expecting and annealing of primers and extension of dna molecule uh, dna dna into number of copies the used uh, structure or used uh, mechanical structure is called as the thermocycler and one cycle consists of these three three elements 
So DNA, you are taking some insert, uh, taking uh, your example, you are taking an insulin DNA or insulin fragment or a gene. You would like to amplify the DNA. So you are taking that a particular DNA. It, is, it, it may consist of long or short DNA, and you are using a process. The process is different, and process should be understand understood by the students. So these are the different chemicals that has been used in the process of PCR. And this magnesium chloride is it will be useful for stabilizing the reaction. And there will be usage of some dyes which will give the coloration to the PCR. So, in the initialization, what you are doing is you are you are making the DNA into fragments. So, fragmentation can be uh, happen in the replication by the enzymes. It may be tropoisomerase, it may be gyrase, or it may be of uh, helicase like that. But in this process, what is happening here is you are separating these two new, uh, the DNA fragments or the templates that means you are breaking the hydrogen bonds. The breakage can happen through the by raising the temperature to 92 to 94 degrees uh, centigrade that is called as a denaturation. You are denaturating the DNA and separating the fragments. Number 2, after the separation you need to use the primers that will develop that will be useful uh, that, that act as a initiators for the formation of a new strand. So, the tri primers are of two kinds, one is called the forward, forward primer, second one is called as a reverse primer. And please remember the process of addition of primers is called as a annealing, annealing is you are, addition, you are adding a specialized fragment to your DNA. Once you are separated, then you are adding something to it for elongation of the DNA. So, that annealing happens by decreasing the temperature. So, you have to decrease the temperature to 50 to 50, 70 degrees, the ideal temperature is 58 and 62 degrees. Then once the primer get added, then I already told you that there is an uh, important enzyme called the tag polymerase which is, uh, which is extracted from a thermophilus bacteria. It's, it can act, generally the enzymes will denature by increasing the temperature, but this will be active while increasing the temperature. So, the extension of this particular uh, primer stand happens by adding the nucleotides, they are called as the DNTPs. So, DNTPs will be added to the each nucleotide by this enzyme called as a TAC polymerase by which the strand will grow. So, one is parent strand, the other one is a new strand. Hence, you, you are producing a new different two strands, this is called to be the extension, this can be termed as an extension. So, you will uh, produce multiple number of copies by using one particular DNA and one cycle consists of three units called as denaturation, annealing and extension. Like that 2 to the power of n, n number of cycles will be performed and in generally the cycles may vary from species to species. So, here you will see, you will see a single copy of DNA strand over at 1 trillion copies may be generated by the 40 cycles. So, 40 minutes I can say. So, each cycle will be performed by a particular time and n number of copies will be produced and these each our DNA or the desired DNA can be extracted by using a method called as or identified by using a method called as a electrophoresis. So, this is the DNA marker that you are using and these are the amplified DNAs in each cycle. So, you can identify you whether your DNA is produced in the sample or in the content that has been uh, uh, that has been inserted into the thermocycler in by by using a method called as a electrophoresis and this is the graph that is showing the total processes one you are raising the temperature to 94 degrees or 96 degrees and with the time the primary annealing happen where you are decreasing the temperature once again you are increasing the temperature to 70 degrees for the extension of particular uh, sequence so this is called as one particular cycle and uh, there are many errors that may happen in the PCR that the composition of DNA is very important because you all, all know that the DNA, the GC component in the DNA will play a vital role because it has the tri triple hydrogen bonds where the GC component is more there might be chance of usage of much more energy. Second there might be chance of primers that they can self anneal and it can be stopped by utilize by using some chemicals in the, prim in the, in the addition of primers. And the long DNAs may be, used, uh, may, be, may be generated by the PCRs about through the PCR, but sometimes there might be chance of uh, deep urination may happen and that can be avoided by using the high pH buffer and decreasing of denaturation temperature and use of proof reading DNA polymerases which are available in the market. 
and the DNA polymerase choice is very important usage of cholesterol DNA polymerase and buffer is also important for production of a good amount of amplification. So, uh, if you come to the types of DNA uh, PCR, there are a lot of PCRs that have been available and in that I will quote you two examples, one is called the reverse transcriptase PCR, this is one of the one of the best method where you, uh, you, you can take an RNA and convert into DNA and you can, pro, uh, you can prepare a new DNA which is a desired one. So, that is also available and different type of PCRs are available, real time PCR, this PCR is a real time name itself indicates that. That means, in every step you can identify the contents or amplicons through a chemin luminescence. That is a, that's a, that is a, uh, that is a speciality in real time PCR and hot star PCR it will be a temperature regulated PCR and inverse PCR it, it will make the DNA linear DNA into circular DNA where your desired DNA it will be present at middle at first and later by converting into circular it will be cleaved by the restriction enzymes and the two ends of your linear DNA will consist of your desired DNA. And colony DNA uh, PCR, it is a special type of PCR where the colonies of bacteria can be produced by or uh, expression gene can be produced. And nested gene, uh, nested PCR is a one type of PCR where two different primers will be used. Generally, we use the one, one pair of pi primers. Here, you will use two primers for production of different uh, aspects. So, this is a technology. And finally, I would like to conclude uh, this topic in a, in a clear way. If you use this recombinant technology in a positive and negative way, you, 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 uh, you, if you use a cloning method, you may have the positiveness like production of a al Albert Einstein and you may have a negative effect that production of a negative impacted persons. And these are the some of the pictures where the students generally used to like, you can there might be chance that production of a puppies from an eggshell and a monkeys with a tusks. So, these are this might happen. And uh, look at this is the skate fish which has been if it cloned with a butterfly it does not happen, but if may happens there might be chance of the butterfly like skate fish will be seen in the sea and the hippocampus with a crab and rhinoceros with a fish and diodon uh, fish with a parrot which has the spiny edges. And finally, the elephants with a seal may be conjointly form a new structure and ostrich with antidon. So, uh, this is about a, it is a big topic, it is a huge topic, but I try my level best for concluding this topic and I request all the viewers, my dear students to read the topics in a clear way, in a, in a, in a strategic way because they will play a vital role in your examination, especially for your uh, US, um, uh, PG examinations. Thank you very much.